spotless, a desolate town shadowed by its cornfields that whispered with eerie secrets. Young Mikey, a ten-year-old boy, was ensnared by an unyielding terror. This fear was not just an abstract feeling. It was almost tangible, pressing down on his chest, leaving invisible bruises on his tender heart. Each heartbeat seemed to resonate with the unnerving presence of a sinister clown, a figure that haunted Mikey's nightmares with its painted grin and lifeless button eyes. This grotesque entity wasn't confined to the realm of dreams. It seemed to have seeped into Mikey's reality, infesting every corner of his small town. The remnants of a circus, once vibrant, now only lived on through a faded poster at the town hall, mocking Mikey with its eerie imagery. Even the benign porcelain clown figurine at his dentist's office seemed to conspire against him. Its smile a sinister prelude to terror. These painted grins weren't just decorations. To Mikey, they were ominous harbingers, silently prophesying a time when they would extract screams and tears from their unwitting quarry. Amidst the oppressive heat of a July afternoon, the town of Atlas was engulfed in the fervor of its annual festival. Coaxed by his friends with promises of cotton candy and Ferris wheel rides, Mikey found himself amidst the carnival's deceivingly vibrant chaos, but the lively ambience quickly soured, the sun's harsh glare transforming the joyous tunes into jarring cacophonies. The enticing aroma of popcorn tainted by an inexplicable metallic scent, foreboding fear. The carnival, meant to be a haven of joy, morphed into a sinister tableau as a troop of children clad in clown costumes approached, their painted smiles casting an unsettling glow. Panic clenched Mikey's throat, his heart thundering in his chest as he navigated the increasingly nightmarish fairgrounds. In his desperate flight, he found himself in a dimly lit tent, the air heavy with the scent of decay, and the faint glimmers of dust motes dancing in a stray beam of light. It was in this ominous ambience that a wheezy chuckle reverberated, a sound that seemed to emanate from the very shadows, hinting at the presence of a figure lurking just beyond the edge of sight, face transforming it into a grotesque tapestry of terror and despair. The clown's laughter crescendoed into a cacophony, bouncing off the tense walls, merging with the muffled cries of the trapped children. Mikey's heart raced, his mind teetering on the brink of madness as he struggled against his restraints, the ropes biting into his flesh. In a desperate bid for freedom, Mikey summoned every ounce of strength left in his battered body, his skin slick with sweat and fear. The chair wobbled precariously, the wooden legs groaning under the strain. With a final Herculean effort, Mikey tipped the chair over, crashing to the ground with a thud that echoed through the silent tent. The fall jolted him, sharp pain radiating through his body, but it also loosened the ropes. Gasping for air, Mikey wriggled his wrists, the ropes giving way inch by inch. Giggles, absorbed in his twisted performance, hadn't noticed Mikey's escape attempt. As Mikey freed himself, his eyes scanned the dimly lit tent for an exit. The spotlight flickered, casting long, sinister shadows that seemed to dance mockingly around him. He spotted a small slit in the tent's fabric, a glimmer of the outside world piercing through the oppressive darkness.
crawling on all fours, Mikey made his way towards the sliver of light, every movement agonizingly slow, his heart pounding in his ears. The laughter and the clang of metal faded into the background as he focused solely on the escape. Just as Mikey reached the tent's edge, a cold hand clamped down on his ankle, dragging him back into the darkness. Giggle stood over him, his painted face a mask of fury and amusement. The show must go on, little Mikey, he hissed, pulling Mikey closer. But Mikey, fueled by a surge of adrenaline, kicked out fiercely, catching Giggles off guard. The clown stumbled backward, releasing his grip. Seizing the moment, Mikey scrambled through the slit and out into the cool night air. The sounds of the carnival distant, but still hauntingly present. He didn't stop running until the lights of the carnival were nothing but a faint glow on the horizon. His breaths coming in ragged gasps. Behind him, the laughter of giggles echoed, a chilling reminder of the horrors within. But ahead, Mikey saw the familiar lights of Atlas, a beacon of hope amidst the darkness. The air in Hopewell's pediatric wing grew thick with tension. The eerie undercurrent of unease palpable among the staff and patients alike. Dr. Amara Kapoor, with her keen intuition honed from years of medical practice, felt the weight of the hospital's dark history pressing in around her. She moved through the halls, her footsteps echoing softly. A stark contrast to the usual cacophony of hospital sounds. As the series of bizarre incidents unfolded, Amara's concern deepened. The strange, inexplicable events seemed to weave a sinister thread through the fabric of the hospital's daily routine, disrupting the delicate balance between reality and the shadows that lurked just beneath the surface. The children, with their vacant smiles and hollow eyes, became silent sentinels of the hospital's haunted past. Their transformed demeanors served as a chilling reminder of the lurking presence that seemed to feed on fear and despair. Amara watched them, her heart heavy as they moved like specters through the wards. Their laughter no longer carrying the lightness of innocence, but rather the chilling echo of something far more sinister. Determined to uncover the truth behind the unsettling phenomena, Dr. Kapoor delved into the hospital's archives, her search uncovering a web of secrets that had long been buried beneath layers of dust and forgetfulness. The records spoke of a tragic fire that had claimed part of the hospital decades ago, a disaster that had been swiftly covered up its victims forgotten by all but the building itself. As Amara pieced together the fragments of the past, she realized that the hospital's haunted aura was not merely the residue of a long forgotten tragedy, but the manifestation of unresolved anguish and terror. The spirits of those lost in the fire, their voices silenced by the flames, now sought recognition, their pain echoing through the corridors in a desperate plea for acknowledgement and release. With this newfound understanding, Dr. Kapoor set out to confront the shadows that haunted Hopewell. She enlisted the help of a small team of staff members, each touched by the strange occurrences, to join her in a nighttime vigil aimed at communicating with the restless spirits. As the night deepened, they gathered in the abandoned wing, the epicenter of the eerie happenings, the 
air was charged with anticipation and fear. The silence broken only by the distant sound of a child's giggle, eerily reminiscent of the sinister laughter that had once echoed through the carnival tents of Atlas. Together, they reached out to the spirits, offering empathy and understanding. A beacon of light in the darkness. The hospital, for so long a vessel of suppressed sorrow, began to resonate with their efforts. The atmosphere shifting as if in response to their collective will. As dawn approached, the oppressive aura that had enveloped Hopewell Pediatric Wing began to dissipate, the shadows retreating as if pacified by their acknowledgement. The children, once trapped in their eerie trances, slowly emerged from their nightmares, their smiles no longer twisted by unseen forces, but slowly returning to the innocent expressions of childhood. Dr. Kapoor watched the transformation unfold, a sense of cautious relief washing over her. While the shadows of the past could never be fully erased, their grip on the present had been loosened. The hospital, once a place of hidden fears and whispered tales, could now begin to heal. Its halls no longer echoing with the ghostly remnants of its tragic history, but filled instead with the hopeful sounds of recovery and renewal. Young girl, valiant and bold, who ventured into the darkest forests to reclaim the light stolen by a malevolent force. With each word, Amara's voice grew stronger her conviction unwavering. The tale spun a tapestry of courage, weaving through the twisted corridors of Hopewell, illuminating the shadows cast by Fizzy's sinister presence. As the story unfolded, the spectral figure of Fizzy began to waver, his once menacing aura dimming in the face of the narrative's brilliance. The air, thick, the remnants of despair and tragedy started to clear, as if each word spoken by Amara acted as a balm to the hospital's wounded soul. The young girl in the story, armed with nothing but her wits and an unbreakable spirit, faced down the darkness, her heart a beacon against the encroaching night. She reminded those listening of the power of hope, the strength found in compassion, and the indomitable will to overcome even the most insurmountable odds. Fizzy, once a symbol of fear and chaos, found himself shrinking under the weight of the tale's luminescence. His power, drawn from the shadows and the terror of those he haunted, dissolved as the story reached its climax. The once terrifying clown, a conjurer of nightmares, became nothing more than a wisp of smoke, a mere memory fading into the light of dawn. The ruins of Hopewell, once a canvas of paranoia and fear, transformed under the spell of Amara's storytelling, the spectral children innocence once stolen by Fizzy's depraved performances, gathered around, drawn by the warmth of her voice. As the tale came to an end, their ghostly forms flickered with newfound light, their laughter now a melody of joy rather than echoes of despair. Amara stood amidst the transformation, her heart lightened by the healing wrought by her words. The hospital once a beacon of hope and healing, had been reclaimed from the clutches of darkness. The nightmares and ash, remnants of the fire, and Fizzy's reign of terror gave way to a new beginning, a promise of renewal. In the aftermath, 
Amara's tales became legend, whispered among the halls of Hopewell as a testament to the power of hope and the enduring strength of the human spirit. Her stories, a blend of medicine and magic, served as a beacon, guiding those lost in their own darkness toward the light. And in this new chapter, Hopewell emerged not just as a place of healing for the body, but a sanctuary for the soul. A haven where the echoes of laughter and life could once again resonate, free from the shadows of the past, drowning in their own vaults of gold. The audience, initially uneasy, soon found themselves caught in the whirlwind of Barnaby's dark humor. Laughter, thick and uncontrollable, filled the air. Each joke landing with a precision that felt almost supernatural. But as the night wore on, the laughter began to take on a life of its own. It was no longer a response to Barnaby's macabre punchlines, but a force, an entity, that seemed to feed on the crowd's hysteria. The once innocent mirth transformed into something ominous, a laughter that clawed at the edges of sanity. Barnaby, now a puppet to the grim grimoire of giggles, watched as his audience descended into madness, their laughter echoing long after the jokes had ended. The air became thick with an unsettling energy, and the shadows cast by the stage lights seemed to dance with malevolent glee. In the aftermath, the once vibrant comedy club stood silent, a hollow shell haunted by the echoes of laughter gone wrong. Barnaby, his mind fractured by the power he had unleashed, wandered the empty streets. His once bright future as a comedian shattered by the very jokes that had made him a star. The grim grimoire of giggles, its pages now silent, sat on a dusty shelf in the forgotten corner of the bookstore, waiting for its next victim, its legacy, a reminder of the fine line between laughter and madness, and the dark power that lies within words when wielded without care. Amara, with the ghostly remnants of Fizzy's spirit still clinging to her, sensed the disturbance in the fabric of joy and laughter. She knew that the battle against the darkness was far from over. The sinister presence in the children's drawings and the flicker of darkness in her own eyes served as a constant reminder of the lurking shadows, always ready to re-emerge. As the laughter's toll echoed through the night, Amara steeled herself for the ongoing conflict, knowing that the line between light and shadow was ever fragile, and the fight for the souls of Hopewell was far from won. The story of the fearless princess warrior and the cackling shadow beast was not yet complete, and the final chapter remained unwritten, a testament to the enduring struggle between hope and despair, laughter and fear from shared joy not fear and destruction. Barnaby frantically searched through the grimoire for a punchline powerful enough to defeat the beast spawned from fear. In a moment of clarity, he found it, not in a malicious cackle, but in a quiet sigh that highlighted the absurdity of the worm's existence. Its insatiable appetite was nothing more than an endless joke. As he shared this insight with the worm, a hush fell over the city. The beast, unable to find humor in its own existence, materialized in all its grotesque form. A writhing mass of shadows, its laughter choked in its throat. 
The city was still recovering from the chaos and strange occurrences caused by Barnaby's twisted sense of humor. Banana peels vanished. Buildings reverted to their previous states. And even politicians seemed to have sprouted new hair, though not always tastefully. Barnaby, alone on the stage, carried the heavy burden of his final joke on his conscience. He came to the realization that he was not a hero, but a fool who had stumbled into darkness and barely managed to escape unscathed. As he picked up the now blank grimoire, he vowed never to use its power for comedy again. Instead, he would become a storyteller, using cautionary tales to warn others of the danger of unleashing laughter without foresight. Barnaby's journey from a comedian to a sage marked a new chapter, one where his tales, woven from his own experiences, would serve as beacons for those navigating the fine line between joy and despair. Feel free to continue the story, and I'll assist in maintaining the narrative's coherence and connection to the previous segments. During the quiet hours of the night, when stillness felt suffocating, Barnaby's mind would betray him. The worm's punchline seeped into his thoughts, a haunting reminder of the darkness that lurked behind every joke. It was a constant presence, evidence of the madness that had consumed him during his time as a comedian in the twisted city. And he knew, no matter how hard he tried to escape, the darkness would always linger like a scar, ready to resurface and overwhelm him once more. In this new chapter of his life, Barnaby sought solace in storytelling, hoping to distance himself from the chaotic past. Yet, the memories of his former life, marked by laughter and darkness intertwined, were inescapable. They served as a stark reminder of the thin line between joy and despair, a theme that became central to his cautionary tales. As he continued to share his stories, Barnaby's audience grew, drawn to the wisdom and vulnerability in his tales. His journey from a comedian who toyed with the shadows to a sage who illuminated them with his stories resonated with many. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Thank you for watching, he would conclude. A vestige of his old performer's habit, mingling with his new role, reminding his audience that even in the digital age, the human connection and shared experiences, even those tinged with darkness, or what truly mattered. Let me know if there's more to add or another direction you'd like to take the story in.